We'll have their chance to catch up somehow. Yes. yes and so um, Mark Brosky practically can introduce himself and what he uh, has to offer. Definitely will benefit your business and how you communicate. We know that social media is vital today for any form of communication, whether you're speaking to a child or a client. So Mark will be able to guide you on that. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Excellent. So. Yeah, so again, yeah, my name is Mark Brodsky, and my company is MB Digital Communications. So I work with real estate agents uh, and some other small businesses uh, to help them drive business using email marketing and social media. Uh, I'll touch briefly on the services that we offer um, at the end. Uh, but in terms of experience, I'm actually coming up on 11 years uh, doing this for, uh, for real estate agents. Uh, and if you read Real Estate Magazine, I'm actually a contributor there uh, in technology. So um, for email marketing and social media tips. Uh, so before we get started, a couple pieces of housekeeping. Uh, for anybody who hasn't given me a business card, please feel free to give me one at the end. I'm happy to send a copy of the slides after. And second, please do not be shy about asking questions. Because uh, everybody here is at a bit of a different level, I'm sure, for social media. If you have a question about something, chances are another three or four people in the room are a little bit too shy to ask. So please do not be shy about asking questions. So that's what we're talking about today. Um, again, uh, it's, I think it's really applicable for both basic users and people that are already a little bit experienced. Uh, we're talking about um, picking a social media site, um, how to properly set up your networks, uh, the challenges and um, some ways that you can actually attract people to, um, to start your following. Uh, we're going to talk about creating content and finding content. Uh, I'm going to talk about Facebook advertising. And I'm also going to touch briefly on why you want to use social media to actually grow your mailing list. Um, now, before I get started, if I can get a show of hands, how many people here uh, are active on or have a profile on LinkedIn? Okay. And how many people have a Facebook business page? And how many people are active on that Facebook business page? Okay. Uh, is anybody using Instagram for business? Oh, wow. Okay. So you might be a little bit more advanced than I was expecting. Uh, great. Uh, anybody on Twitter? Okay, and are you active on Twitter? Okay, all right, good to know. Okay, um, so it gives me, I like that because it gives me an idea of the, of the level in the room, so I will try to address sort of from start to finish. So uh, to go really sort of back to basics about why we're using social media, uh, again, anybody who's been in business for more than 20 years, you probably recognize the sales funnel. Uh, it represents traditional media, so print, uh, direct mail, radio, TV, uh, the goal with this funnel is that you're sending a message out to the widest number of people possible and converting some of them uh, and then just repeating the process. Uh, the good thing about this funnel is that it works. Um, it's worked for decades. The challenge is, though, that it's expensive and time consuming because if you're putting in a newspaper ad, uh, you're di uh, doing direct mail, you're competing with huge companies. You're competing with like a Shoppers Drug Mart, a Canadian Tire, uh, and they have much deeper pockets. So what social media does is it actually flips the funnel. So instead of targeting as wide a group of people as possible, you're actually going towards a much targeted group of people. Um, really people that know you and people that they know as well. And the way you're targeting them is by regular content on social media that's going to engage them. So it's going to help keep you, uh, keep you top of mind, um, build awareness, and in the, in the, to drive new business, we're going to ask people you already know to provide those referrals and again, by staying top of mind using social media, that can be a really great tool. Uh, and you will hear me use the word engage, uh, because I'll, I think a mistake that uh, many small business owners make is you close the deal and you tend to focus on the next client. Uh, but really, repeat clients are, will actually spend more money, it's been proven, and you can use them to provide referrals. The challenge is making staying in touch with them a priority. Uh, and again, that's what social media and email can do. Uh, but the way you do it is by engaging them, by giving them content on a regular basis, again, that they can use, um, that makes them think of you the next time they or somebody in their network uh, needs to um, need to buy or sell a piece of real estate. So the advantage, of course, that real estate agents have, I think over many small businesses, is really that genuine connection that you have to your clients. 
right? You spend a lot of time with them, either helping them sell a property, helping them buy a property. Uh, I've had one client tell me that he actually knows when somebody is pregnant before the family does, right? Because they're right because they're looking to buy out. So again, you really have a good connection. You work in their neighborhoods and you understand what makes them tick, uh, and that differentiates you from almost any other small business. Um, so again, that means that the content you're posting uh, can really, really speak to them. Uh, and again, social media is really good for a number of things, but really building and expanding relationships, uh, increasing that awareness, and growing your email list. And I would like to say here, the goal really for anything that you're doing online should be to move it into real life, right? I mean, it's one thing to be posting, to generating, to generating conversations. The goal really is to move it into real life. And one of the ways that social media helps is that if you're out in the neighborhood, People are going to comment to you about things they've seen, uh, things that they've um, seen you post. They may not necessarily have interacted with it, but they've seen it. Uh, and again, it's a really warm introduction uh, when, when people see you in person. So before I go on, I'm going to talk about uh, go a broader view of the social media sites. But do I have any questions? Not yet. Okay, all right, I like to pause. So really the big seven are, we've got Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, Pinterest, Snapchat, and YouTube. So those are the big seven. Um, I'm gonna focus on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn today. Uh, Twitter, for people that are using Twitter, if you're using it and enjoying it, by all means stick with it. Uh, in terms of anybody looking to add a new social network, it's not always one I recommend mostly because they don't have the data on their users that the other networks have. So you may be reaching out to people out of your geographical area, um, but I mean, it's a great tool for, um, for aggregating news. Um, you know, certainly it's a great tool for some world leaders. Um, but if you're looking to add a new network, it tends to be a little bit time consuming. I don't know if you found that it takes a little bit more time than other networks, but if you're enjoying it, you'll use it. But if you're looking to add a social network, I'm going to talk about the top three. Um, Pinterest can be good because it's fun. Uh, is anybody on Pinterest? Okay, so uh, do, do you, you enjoy it? Yeah, so it's, it's fun. It's almost like window shopping, right? Exactly. Yeah, so that, that, um, Snapchat, I feel like Snapchat's going to be big for people that you want to deal with in a few years. Right now it's teenagers and people in their early 20s. So uh, that's where your clientele is. Um, I was speaking yesterday and it, Gentleman told me that one of his colleagues was doing really well on Snapchat. Um, again, dealing with uh, a much younger clientele. Uh, and of course, YouTube is a great place to be, especially if you're producing videos. So in terms of the top three, uh, the reason that you want to be on Facebook, even if you don't enjoy it personally, Facebook is where, at this point, the majority of, cli of your clients are. They're spending time on Facebook. Uh, and the nice thing about Facebook is you can post any kind of content. So whether it's a, a text-only status update, you're sharing an article, a video, uh, photo albums, you can show, you can share anything on Facebook. And I will go into it, but in my opinion, they really have the best advertising platform. Oh, so I should mention, you're looking at posting, I would say about once a day, for Facebook. Uh, we're looking at LinkedIn. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, yes. What's the difference between having a Facebook page yes. and a Facebook business? Yes. I can't figure it out. Okay, so differentiate. I'm going to call it a Facebook profile for personal mm -hmm. and a Facebook page for business. Okay, well, I so, basically, I just set up a page on my personal right. for Facebook, okay. my business. Right, okay. But... I don't think that's what I should be doing. Okay, so there's two main differences between a Facebook profile and a Facebook business page. Uh, one is that when you sign up for your Facebook personal account, um, I'm sure we all read through the 80 pages of disclaimers and to check off that we're not going to be using it for business. So they actually, that's part of the disclaimer, they don't want you using it for business. Okay. Uh, secondly, you can only advertise on Facebook if you have a business page. So they won't let you advertise with a personal page only. Uh, and with a business page, you actually get the analytics. So you post something, Facebook will tell you how many people saw it, how many people clicked on it, um, and also it'll tell you, you know, when your users are online. And does it cost anything? The basic usage is free. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, so that you definitely want to be using a Facebook business page. Yeah. Great. So for LinkedIn, um, a lot of the value on LinkedIn is that when people will Google your name, your LinkedIn profile is going to be the, one of the first things that comes up. So it's your opportunity to make sure the content is completely up to date. Um, again, whether it's a headshot, awards, testimonials, uh, experience, you just want to make sure that's up to date. Uh, it can be something that's visited once every six months. Again, just to make sure that it's up to date. Um, if you're posting, you can post uh, a lot of what you might be posting on Facebook can also be posted on LinkedIn. Um, I would tend to stick to things that are a little bit more industry related uh, because chances are you're connected to people, uh, to call it, more to colleagues than to potential clients. Um, but again, just as with any other social network, if you enjoy using LinkedIn, that's where the value is going to be because we're a lot more apt to use something that gives us joy than something that feels like a chore. Uh, finally, Instagram. So, yes. Uh, with LinkedIn, you see more and more people posting ads. Like ads for? Like, well, uh, realtors posting uh, house for sale. Okay. Is that a benefit? Is that? You know what, I think it, de it depends on the other content they're posting. So I'm, I'm going to address that, but the majority of what you want to post should be informative and non-salesy. So I think if you're doing that right, you can get away with a new listing um, to, to be posting, but it, I wouldn't want that to be the only thing you're posting. Yeah. So anybody have any other questions about LinkedIn? So in terms of Instagram, uh, Instagram's a bit of a different animal. Um, certainly, uh, LinkedIn is being used by professionals of all ages. Facebook, at this point, is skewing about 34 and up. Instagram, I would say sort of mid to late 30s and down, um, although that it is, it is growing. Um, one of the differences between Instagram and the other networks is it's, it's exclusively app-based, so it's only on your phone. Um, that's also an advantage because, because it is photo-based and you're carrying a photo a camera around with you all the time. Once you get into the habit, you can actually uh, you can actually start creating your own content using Instagram. And I know there's at least one former photographer here in the room, so that's the advantage. Uh, and again, you want to be posting about once, uh, I would say once a day. Uh, and just like with Facebook, you want to make sure that your Instagram uh, your Instagram account is for business. Um, and again, one of the reasons is that it gives you uh, some analytics. Uh, the other reason is when you advertise on Facebook. You can actually cross advertise on Instagram as well. So, any questions about Instagram? Great. So, I want to talk briefly about setting up your networks. And again, there's going to be information here for both that are people get, that are getting set up and anybody who's looking just to take it to the next level. Uh, the advantage that most of the social media networks have is that there's not a whole lot of customization that can be done. So most of them will have a uh, header photo that you can customize. Most of them will have a profile photo. Um, I would say you want to make them consistent across the board so that in terms of branding, when somebody uh, goes to one network or another, they know exactly, who, they know exactly who's there. Uh, Facebook especially, you want to take advantage of all the fields that Facebook offers. And if you haven't visited your Facebook page in a little while, um, I suggest you go there because they've added a Facebook story. So you can actually add an additional photo and a description of who you are and what you do. Uh, and this is important because Facebook uses that information to help build your to help build your following. So when when you're on Facebook and maybe you're looking at other and people are looking at other pages by realtors, uh, yours may come up, especially if they're in the area, uh, as pages that somebody might like. Uh, but only if Facebook knows um, who you are, what you do, and and uh, where your business is. So you absolutely want to make sure that it's uh, that it's correct and up to date. The only small challenge with the photos, of course, is that each site, um, each site has different requirements uh, for the sizing. Um, but is anybody familiar with Canva.com? Okay, excellent. I've tried that. Mm. So I like introducing a new tool. So uh, no professional affiliation. Uh, it is a free website and app that will actually help you size photos correctly for your social media. Um, and again, happy to send out if this would be in the slides, but as long as you're using your own photography, it's free. Um, you can size the correct the banner size, the profile photo size. Um, you can create ads here. You can lay text over photos. Uh, and again, a really great tool, and then you just download it and use it. Um, and of course, the benefit is that 
the images are going to be sharp um, when people go to your page. And I think, and in terms of LinkedIn, one of the nice things about LinkedIn is that it actually gives you um, a percentage of how complete your profile is. So they'll actually direct you specifically to what's missing. Uh, so you do want to spend a few minutes um, making sure your LinkedIn profile is complete. Of course, just because that is the first thing that people are going to see. Do you have any questions about page setup? Sorry, that clock is throwing me off. <laughs> All right. Yes. Oh, yeah, by the So let's talk about announcing your presence and developing followers. So you may go on Facebook, thank you. Uh, you may go on Facebook and you may see that uh, there are pages that have thousands of followers. Uh, the thing you have to remember is they all started at zero. They all started at zero and they use different tools to attract people to their feeds. So you really, um, very few people are gonna find you organically. So you really have to invite people and make sure that, that people know that you're around. Uh, First thing to do, um, even if you're already established on social media, if you send out an email to your database with, um, with one call to action, all you want people to do in this email is click to one of the social networks they use and connect with you. I think you'll find that you can easily uh, increase your number of followers. Um, in this example for Olivia Salon, they had a database of just 200. Uh, they sent out this email, um, it went out to everybody. All they wanted people to do was connect with them on Facebook, Twitter, or Pinterest. Uh, by the end of the day, they uh, so within two days, they had 60 followers on Facebook. And again, which is a, uh, not a lot in general, but it's a really great start for only having them active for two days. So I think people that know you are going to be happy to follow you because they want to support your business. Secondly, on your website. So if you've done the work to actually drive somebody to your website, you want to give them tools to stay in touch with you. So again, whether it's um, whether you're getting somebody's email address or a contact, uh, or with social media icons. Um, again, if you're using anything like an agent locator um, or exact, they'll have that built in. Um, if you've already got this on your site though, I would like you to test it to make sure that it works. Because I would say at this point, about a third of the links that I've tried do not work. Uh, maybe you've got a new website and you haven't, that you haven't given them the right address. Maybe you've changed the name of your page. Maybe you're no longer active on a feed. Uh, and really it, it looks, not great if somebody clicks onto, let's say, your uh, your Instagram link and it brings up a blank page. So you want to make sure that you want to make sure that they work. Um, and then all you have to do, of course, is go to your page and um, and copy that link. So www.facebook.com/slash, and that's the that's the link that you want to use for uh, for website. And of course, I would suggest use them in your email signature, because uh, again, every time you email somebody new. Um, we've already got the signature, right? You've got the name, the phone number, the website. Include the social media icons and links. Uh, every time you send out an email to somebody new, you have an opportunity to gain a follower. Uh, and the nice thing about these is they really are a one-time setup, um, and they'll continue working for you in the background. Uh, then other social media sites. So especially on LinkedIn, there are three opportunities to put in uh, websites. So of course you want your professional website. Uh, you may have your Facebook page. You may have a sign up for a uh, sign up link for uh, for email. But again, because with the social media networks these days, everyone's a little bit scattered. And if you're on multiple sites, you want people to be able to reach you um, where where they're spending their time. So, do you have any questions about this part of the building followers? Because I know that's it's a really big topic. Because of course, one of the main goals of social media is to increase your following, which helps build awareness. Yes. The content we are posting on Facebook, Instagram, should be different or could be different? Both of them posting the same material on my Instagram and Facebook. Uh, so that's yeah, that's a good question. So what you're it works one way and not the other. So what you're posting on Facebook may not necessarily work on Instagram. Because Instagram you can include photos but not actual links. So if you're posting on Instagram and sharing to Facebook, yeah, that's great. But you will have to format the content a little bit differently for Instagram. But um, um, we got a whole section on content. Yeah, thanks. Great. So one of the, the things, of course, you want to you want to first connect with people that you actually know. Um, one of the easiest ways to do this 
um, is to actually invite people that, you're, that are friends with you on your personal profile. Uh, again, when you go to your Facebook business page, under the banner, I think there's three dots. You click that, and it's invite friends. Uh, you can send out a message within Messenger, which I know is more effective to actually getting people to click like. Uh, but again, you may want yeah, of course. Uh, under your Facebook banner, yeah, um, on a business page, okay, um, it pulls out a drop-down menu. Uh, one of the options is invite friends. Right. So it'll pull up your friends list, and you can pick and choose who you'd like to invite to like your business page. You can't you can't select all, can you? Okay. Not as far as I have to go. At one point you could, but, um, but I would I suggest probably I wouldn't necessarily invite everybody because okay. uh, you don't necessarily want um, other realtors to like your page. So I would I would be, and you also may not want to invite friends that don't live in the area that you work. Uh, it's a, really it's a personal choice, but. Um, and really, it's one thing, it's something you can do every few months. It's just because you've added new friends, yeah, you can do that. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, but you were, can you, um... Well, I did it at first. I'm not sure how about it is right now. Okay. I mean, things we honestly could have changed from the time that I left my house to the time I got here. The last time I checked, they want you to just select people individually. Um, yeah. Great. Uh, another thing you can do is, if you think about the kind of businesses that you refer business to or that refer business to you, you want to connect with them on Facebook, so like their page. Uh, chances are, uh, first of all, they're going to get a notification that somebody new has liked their page. They're going to check you out. Chances are they'll follow you back. And again, you never really know um, where that next referral, next that piece of business is going to come from. So whether it's a mortgage broker, a banker, um, home inspector, stager, designer, uh, landscaper, just anybody that you can refer business to and you can refer business back, and you want to connect with them on Facebook. And of course, because social media is really meant to be a conversation, uh, you do want to be interactive with people. So at the very least, um, you want to react when people uh, like or share or comment on a post. Um, again, with a little bit more time, you can, you can on the people that you're following, you can actually comment as well on what they're posting, uh, especially if they're posting something interesting. And again, they're going to get a notification that somebody interacted with them. And it's just it's a way to start that relationship um, again, with the goal of moving into real life. Yes. Yeah, moving into real life. How quick? So there's always a troublemaker. <laughs> uh, there, there's always a troublemaker. Uh, you know what? It takes because, because the, you know that's our business, right? Yeah. No, of course. We, we, we can whatever. Yeah. Uh, you know what? So it so it, it takes time. Um, advertising helps. Um, it also depends on how active you are in the community. So if you're out and about, if you're you know sponsoring a sports team or you know you're at the grocery store and people are seeing you, that you know that um, it's going to turn into business a little bit faster that way. But social media really is best for building awareness. So again, it's just that repetition, um, you know, just to make sure people know who you are and what you do. Um, that's that's really what it does best. Yeah. So let's talk about content. Uh, if I can get a show of hands, how many people are creating any of their own content for the social media channels? Like photos, videos, blogs? Okay, can I ask, what, what sort of content are you producing? So mostly it's educational, so what is on tags? Okay. Some people are tags about pre construction, inspection. I've okay. myself pictures, photos, not videos, really. Right, okay. Oh, interesting. All right. Um, sorry, it's a hand to you. Terry. Yeah. Yeah, I, like, you know, if I have a sale or a lease or if I'm doing a staging event, I, I post something or I'll, I'll you know, create a montage of you know, the event going on that day. Oh, okay. Post it. Yeah. Okay, great. Or create something that will, you know. <laughs> right. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Okay, yes. Well, I just stuck her in, but um, what I want to do is like motivational Monday, to okay. Tuesday, Wednesday, wisdom. Like, I want to do like, Every day, like have a different theme of oh, what okay. I'm going with. Okay, great. Um, and did I see another hand? Are you creating? Very similar. And then open houses, I would do okay. short videos. Oh, great. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's sort of is what I expect. I mean, there are a few people that are creating some of their own content. Uh, but again, we're going to find very few people actually create all of their own content, uh, really because it is time consuming, right? I mean, especially it's one thing to post a listing, it's another to create like a, a, a collage of photos with text. Um, so I'm 
I'm going to give you some examples of uh, easy ways to create some of your own content, and then some ways you can legally use other people's content. Um, and again, to, to use it to, to share it. So now regardless of, the, of whether you're sharing your own content or somebody else's, the goal of course is to make it interesting enough that they share it with their list, because that's really where the awareness comes from. So something useful, um, something engaging, something that, that uh, a little bit emotional, uh, and it, uh, again, I'm going to talk about it more, but it doesn't have to be real estate related. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'll say 80% of it should not be. So again, um, I would say the top four things that people are interested in, food, decor, gardening, and local events. Um, and so if you post uh, interesting articles like that, you're going to find that people are sharing them. What is it? Oh yeah, um, food, decor, yeah, gardening, and uh, and local events. Because again, if you can act as a bit of a filter, people will follow you because they understand you're not posting information, um, you're not just spamming, right? You're posting information that's interesting. So in terms of the kind of content you can be creating, images are fantastic. So again, we all walk around with a camera in our pocket. If you can get used to having it out. Thinking about uh, about an interesting way to capture to capture images, that's a really great way to share content. Uh, you can start with it on Instagram. You can cross post to Facebook, um, and again, it's a piece of original content. Uh, again, links. So of course, anything you're posting on your website, whether it's a blog, a new listing, uh, you want to post that. The nice thing about Facebook and LinkedIn is they will actually pull in the, a lot of the information for you, right? So they'll pull in the picture, they'll pull in the link in the description. Uh, you can say a few words about it. But they'll they'll do the, the heavy lifting. Number three, um, the one thing that I would encourage everybody to wrap their head around for the next uh, in the next few months is video. Um, video is huge. Um, at this point, uh, certainly on a Facebook feed, I would say at least two thirds of people's posts are videos, uh, and they're not all actually action videos. Some are just sort of animated uh, animated photos. Uh, and again, they start automatically, and they're what the eye is drawn to. So the one thing, if you're looking at something in your marketing mix, uh, would be video. Um, you might be comfortable doing it, doing it yourself, uh, having somebody hold a, hold a phone with a good mic. Uh, you might want to do something a little bit more professional or things that are not time sensitive. But video is really one of the best tools you can use on social media to give people the impression, uh, an impression about who you are. Um, I mean, again, it, we see that sort of with celebrities, right? Like you see somebody famous in real life, you have that feeling that you know them. So you show the celebrities in your neighborhood, right? People recognize the face, just like a local politician. Um, and again, it just warms up that conversation in real life. Um, so I know, so Maria, you were doing video, right? Okay, so uh, are you on camera introducing an open house? Well, normally, yes. Okay. Sometimes from outside, inside, just giving them a bit of details about the house itself also, but very okay. short. Right, okay. Is anybody else using video? So, well, okay. Same. Okay. Yeah, and that's, and that's great. I mean, you could even do a few a few seconds on on the market at the beginning of every month just to break down the numbers. Again, it's something that you're reading that you understand, and it's just it's another piece of content that can get posted. So, do you have any questions about these before I give a couple of examples? All right. Uh, so, just a couple of examples of. Um, things that my clients have done. One had sold a condo in Midtown. And one of the things he did after it sold uh, is that he actually posted before and after pictures of, of the staging. Because again, it, it, uh, when you see them um, as, um, as big as they're supposed to be, like it really is a, an impressive impact between the paint job and the furniture. Uh, and again, it's a really great, people love the photos uh, because they love the decor. And it's also sort of a subtle way of, of selling because it's like, I did it for this client, I can do it for you. Uh, the one on the right, a uh, client of mine in Oakville. So she was doing a major renovation on the 60s bungalow. Uh, she actually, they stripped it down to the studs. And she, for her personal use, she actually documented it. She was doing it, she posted it on her personal Facebook. And because we were connected there, I actually asked her if she would be comfortable um, sharing on her business page. Um, and we did, and it got really more reactions than almost anything else. Uh, so over the course of the months, we added photos. And the newsletter that's going out today actually is the big reveal. So she actually hired a professional photographer to come in, um, to you know, just to come in and, and photograph the place to uh, to show it off. So again, if you're struggling for a little bit of personal content, full scale renovation. 
full scale renovation, videos, and pictures, that'll do it. And of course, if you are sending out any of your own emails, uh, if you're doing email newsletters, they're great to share on social media. Um, two reasons. One is that people that are following you on social media are not necessarily on your mailing list. Um, as well, um, sorry, is anybody doing email marketing? Okay. So the average open rate for a marketing email is roughly 20 to 22 percent. So even if you're sending it to your entire database, it's easily 75 percent of the list may not be opening it. They may want to see it on Facebook. Um, as well, if you're putting different pieces of content in it, they can be used separately, uh, separately on social media. So yes, there's been some talk uh, on Facebook how they've changed certain algorithms about what you're seeing, able to see what other people are seeing. Yes. And um, I mean, I've noticed it myself. Yes. In that, in that, certain people you used to see regularly mm -hmm. are are now sort of gone. Right. So, what is it? How do you overcome that if you want to remain in front of mind with people? You were about 15 slides ahead of me. I promise I will address it. <laughs> All right. But thank you. Yeah. Uh, so, but do you have any questions about sort of creating and sharing your own content and cross sharing? So this, it, would it, can you just step one step back about email marketing? Like yeah. I understand the twenty-two percent, right? So you're saying you should maybe just say again. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so yeah, so if you're sending out, let's say you have five hundred people on your mailing list, only about twenty, uh, average twenty percent. I mean, I, honestly, I like for my clients to be higher, but really twenty twenty-five percent are going to open that email. So again, you have seventy-five percent that aren't going to open that email. But they may be following you on Facebook, and they may want to read, read the news on Facebook. Yeah. Um, so I would like to pause for time for questions. Uh, I've, been, I've been speaking for about eight years, and of all those times, I got one comment that told me I did not leave enough time for questions, and it keeps me awake at night. So that's why I will stop and ask for questions. Uh, so next thing I want to talk about is using other people's content. Uh, now, again, if you were to do this 20 years ago, uh, you, the papers would have wanted you to get information in writing, right? Uh, if you want to publish something from the Globe, like reproduction in whole or in part, um, you needed written permission. These days, anybody creating content has done a complete 180. Uh, if they're publishing content online, they want people to share it. They're publishing it. Uh, you see it on most sites. It actually got share buttons, right? They want that content to be shared. Um, the one thing you cannot do is take an article and and put it in its entirety on your site. Uh, whether it's a blog or whether it's on Facebook, you can't just cut and paste. You always want to include a link back to that article. So does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and of course, you want to you want to be using only um, only articles from credible sources. Um, and to give an example, um, HGTV.ca is a really great site. Uh, they update every day. They've got photo essays. Uh, they've got information on renovations. Um, and one of the things they do really well is lists. So five mistakes that um, to avoid when renovating your bathroom. Um, people really love those. Anybody familiar with house.com? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a great site because the articles are actually written by interior designers. Um, once in a while you're going to come across a piece that is focused on selling things. But for the most part, it really is informational. Um, and again, it's updated. They probably got like 10 to 12 new articles a day. Uh, Livable.com. So that used to be BuzzBuzz Buzz Home. So they actually split into two. So BuzzBuzz Buzz Home is now the industry site. Livable is their consumer site. Uh, so again, you've got, um, you've got the market, you've got design, uh, you've got water cooler. They have some humor articles. Uh, again, a really legitimate site with a lot of content that you can share. This one's sort of under the radar. It's called apartmenttherapy.com. Uh, it skews a little bit younger. It's a little bit more uh, whimsical than I think than HGTV or House. But they uh, they usually have some really great articles, including like lists of kitchen gadgets, um, which um, which are, are fascinating, uh, and people love them. So the, with the put it on Pinterest. Right. Uh, yeah. So with the kitchen gadgets, there's usually a link to uh, to actually purchase it, um, which I actually think is a positive thing because if I see something really cool. I don't want to have to hunt for it. I want, yeah, I want, I want, I want to buy it. Um, 
In terms of local events, uh, I don't know if it's anybody familiar with the Experience York Region website. Okay, so this is this is like a full list of local events. Um, I'm, yeah, they, I, you can do a search for different kinds of events. And again, if you can be that person that is the filter that's posting really great content, you're going to find that people are bookmarking you. Uh, the last one I'll talk about a blog to you. Again, you know, we're, we're just north of the city, but they're best of Toronto. Um, I mean, they, they're coming up with new ones all the time because people uh, people love them. Um, I've yet to find a really good source for something like that for York Region, just because there's so many different um, different townships. Uh, but uh, Blogtio does a good job. A lot of them are north of 401, um, so it's uh, a really good resource. I use Blogtio like every day. Yeah, so they have the other great pieces. So you're probably thinking at this point, okay, so it's a lot of great sources, but where am I actually going to find the time to source the articles? So somebody nodding, thank you. All right. Um, two easy ways that you can actually get content related to you. Uh, is anybody using Google News Alerts? Okay, great. Uh, so you know how great they are. Yeah, um, we've all done a Google search. Um, the default, of course, is websites, but you can actually uh, have Google send you alerts based on keywords and headlines. So especially if you have a Google account, they know exactly where you are. So it's really great content. Um, you know, you of course you can set it up for um, GTA real estate market, Toronto real estate market, um, interest rates Canada, uh, really anything like any any um, any set of keywords you want, and as frequently or infrequently as you want, it'll send it to you. Um, I also suggest you set up a Google News alert for your own name. Because uh, again, you never know who shares your name. They may be in the news. Um, one of my clients in Toronto actually shared a name with a political candidate in Guelph that was uh, charged with robocalling. So of course, when somebody Googles his name, uh, the first thing that comes up is articles about this guy. So we sort of we had to work hard. We updated his website for SEO. Uh, you know, we cleaned up his LinkedIn profile. So they, it was, there was a really clear differentiation. Um, as far as I know, a uh, broker told me there was also sites once in a while that come up like with Rate My Realtor, and your profile may be on there whether you have signed up or not. So it's something that you want to be aware of because anytime something is added, you'll get an alert, and it's a really easy way to stay on top of it. So do you have questions about the Google News Alert? Sorry, what was that York Region one again? Oh. Um, York Region. You're going to send us slides. Oh, I'll, send, I'll send the slides, yeah. Experience York oh, Region. Experience. Yeah. Other thing you can do to actually have content delivered to you, um, anybody who's creating content is going to have an email newsletter. Uh, again, I know HGTV, has all the ones I mentioned will send something on a regular basis. Uh, and of course, they're all over social media. So if you can find a few sources for great content, follow them on social media, sign up for an, an email list, put these emails in a folder, and whenever you need content, um, it's, right, it's right there for you. And it's timely, uh, and you don't have to go hunting for it. Do you have any questions about how to use it legally? Because really, as long as you're not reproducing it in whole, um, you know, you cut and paste the link, uh, and it pulls up all the attribution you need. Good question. Yes. Can you post an article from one of these sites holding the expire after a while? Like, will that disappear a year from now? No, it's there forever. It's there forever. Yeah. I, I mean, you can always hide it or delete it, but it, it's there forever. Now, is anybody familiar with the website Hootsuite? Okay, so okay, oh, but you're familiar with it. So again, no professional affiliation. Uh, it is a um, the basic use is free, um, and the two things that it does really well. One is that it, you can connect up to three social networks to it. So let's just say you're on Facebook and LinkedIn. You can connect to this, and right from within Hootsuite, you can actually post to both networks at once. So you don't have to go to Facebook and then LinkedIn to post. You post it from right within Hootsuite. Secondly, yeah, secondly, it'll actually allow you to schedule content. So if you want to be posting something every day this week, like you were talking about the Motivational Mondays, mm -hmm. uh, you can sit down Monday morning or Sunday night and program in five. You can schedule Monday to Friday. Uh, it's great for open houses because you know earlier in the week. Uh, and again, the basic use, uh, basic use is free. And it also actually will give you analytics and it has a lot of built-in tools. Uh, and it will really save you time if you want to be posting actively. Um, 
And the newest thing that it will do is it will actually post on Instagram for you. Uh, so as long as it's a business page, um, you connect your Instagram account to Hootsuite, um, you plug in the photo, the description, the hashtags, and you, you tell uh, Hootsuite what you want it sent. So again, really great if you're going on vacation. Yes. Um, I, I always wondered about formatting because like LinkedIn seems different formatting than Facebook. So if you go on Hootsuite, uh, is there anything you have to sort of play around with or? Not in my experience. Um, really, uh, you can you post one article and then select both networks. Um, the big, I mean, the big difference is Instagram uh, because the Instagram photos are square. Um, they'll allow you to put something that isn't completely square, but they are particular about um, about the measurements. And if it's not within those measurements, it can look stretched or compressed. Um, so that's when some photo editing um, capabilities come in handy. The best app that I found for um, Instagram is yes. Preview. Okay. And you can like and you can schedule it and you can doctor it up and oh, add cool. captions okay. and save it and everything. So oh, that's a preview. Really, okay. It's new. Okay. Does it allow you to connect to other social networks or just Instagram? Just I believe Instagram. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. Thank you. Any questions about Hootsuite content scheduling? Oh, and the thing about a preview also is you can save all your pictures that you like. Oh, great. So, like, I have, like, my page. Okay. And then when I want to post one. Oh, that's, post yeah, that looks, that looks really good. And okay. then you do a theme and also. Right. Okay. Filter. Excellent. So, thank you. I just found that. Before. Actually, can I get you to, after to email yeah. me the site? Yeah, thank you. All right. So, talk a little bit about this. But when it, uh, regardless of what, what or where you're posting, really 80% needs to be entertaining because nobody is actually going to social media to be sold to. Um, you know, we get frustrated when we see a lot of ads. We're going there to interact with people, to see um, you know, pictures of our friends' kids, uh, see where people are on vacation. Um, really, and it, it, you know, do a buzz, uh, BuzzFeed, uh, BuzzFeed quiz. So we're going there to have fun. Um, you don't want to be selling to people. You want to be, you want your content to fit in really seamlessly with what other people are posting. And I think if you can get that 80% right, 20% of it can be promotional. So if you're talking about a new listing, an open house, uh, and even a couple times a year, just a straight ahead call to action. Uh, so for instance, it may be a little bit late to get prepped for the fall market, but if you want to post something January, February, saying now's a great time to get started um, for the spring market and ask people to give you a call, um, you can set or get in touch with you with Messenger. If you're doing, if you're engaging people well with the other content, you can really, you can get away with a little bit of uh, promotion. Questions about content before I move on to advertising. So now the reason that I'm going to talk for a little while about social media advertising is the question you asked before about the reach. So yeah, Facebook continues to change their algorithm. I'd like to say back in the good old days in 2011, if you posted something on a business page, you could reach about 25% of the people that were following your page. Uh, over the last few years, it's gone down considerably. Uh, and then really in 2016, uh, the organic reach was 1%. Uh, and of course, by organic, I mean just a post that you post on your business page, Facebook would show it to roughly 1% of the people that follow your page. Uh, the only ways to expand that um, without a cost was if people were engaging with it. So if people were liking or commenting or sharing, that told Facebook's algorithm, this is really interesting. So we're gonna show it to more people. Um, but that was the challenge. So now, of course, because Facebook is a business, uh, they want people to advertise. Uh, the nice thing about Facebook, though, is that you can be really targeted, and it is inexpensive. So has anybody used Facebook ads? OK. OK, and have you done like a boosted post or a campaign? OK, and boosted. OK. OK. That's one. So that you have paid for. That you paid for. Um, it's an expensive. It's an expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but then you can because yeah, they keep asking me, do you want to boost this? You know. Oh, then you have, yeah. a, you have a business page. Oh, I do. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> so that's where I'm like having okay. trouble de determining if yeah. I do or not. Okay. Actually. So then you, you do. Um, <laughs> yeah. So there are really there are two main kinds of ad, uh, ads on Facebook. Um, one is a boosted post. So again, if you got that page, um, and I'll go through it. So you've got that page. You actually you post something. Um, it it gives the option to boost. Uh, 
The nice thing about boosted posts is that you can be just as targeted with these as a Facebook ad campaign, um, but there's much, it's much less involved because you've already made the post, you're just sharing it with people. So this is what comes up, you hit the boost. Uh, first thing you do is you wanna choose your audience. Uh, the default on Facebook is Canada from 18 to 64 plus. Uh, so my suggestion would be you wanna narrow that down. Uh, again, you can narrow it down as far as the first three digits of the postal code, and you can do the postal codes where you work. Um, you can do all of your region. Uh, you can do certain cities and a radius. Uh, and then you can also choose by demographic. So you can uh, narrow down the age range. Uh, you can target just men, just women, both. Uh, so again, it's a, it's a really great tool. Uh, so that's the first thing you wanna do. Next thing you do is you set your budget. Uh, so again, you can set a total budget uh, and then how many days you want the ad to run. Um, one of the nice things that Facebook does is it actually give you um, an estimate of how many people you can reach for that money. Uh, now, it's been my experience in the GTA, it's gonna cost you about 10 cents per impression. So 10 cents for every person that Facebook shows your post to. Um, the further out you go, the cheaper it is. It's just much more competitive in the GTA. Um, yeah, I worked with a uh, realtor in St. Catharines, and she had boosted a post for an open house, and it was just, I mean, the numbers were off the charts. And I, I said, like, Susan, like, how much money did you invest in this? And she said, $5. I'm like, oh, okay. So that Toronto and the GTA, it's just, it's so much more competitive. So you're bidding against other people. But again, my experience, roughly about 10 cents per person. So again, to reach 10,000 people, it's $100. Uh, and the nice thing, especially if you're using this as a, a sales tool for a listing presentation, you can actually uh, show, show potential sellers, yeah, I'm gonna advertise your property. It's gonna reach you know, 10 to 20,000 people. It's going to be this age range in this um, this geographical area, um, and again, you can point to the number of people that that have actually seen the post, the number of people that clicked on the post, and the number of people who engaged with the post. Um, so again, the big difference is people may see the post without clicking on it. Um, you have got people who click, and then people that actually will click uh, a like or a comment or share it with somebody. Um, and so it actually can be really great for starting conversations and building awareness. So again, the way it works, uh, you want to pick your message. Um, again, it can be often it'll be as simple as just advertising a new listing. Um, depending on your goal, uh, it may be to build awareness and to, to um, increase the number of people who like your page. Uh, I had one client in North York who actually um, she loved butter tarts, and there was a butter tart festival I think out in Alora, um, and so she posted that she boosted it for uh, I think for fifty dollars. Uh, and it reached just over 5,000 people. I mean, it got like three dozen comments. Um, people were sharing it. Um, and it really had, had two results. Uh, it increased the number of people who liked her page in her geographic area uh, by about 60. Um, and her broker now refers to her as the butter tart queen. <laughs> so, you know, there's a, but um, yeah. But it really, uh, for $50 to reach that, that number of people um, really was something, something light and fun, I think is a good investment. Next thing, of course, is you want to define your audience. Uh, nice thing is you can uh, you can create as many different audiences as you want. Um, again, maybe if you're dealing with a property that's going to appeal to family moving up, you may want to target people 30 to 45. Uh, you may, if you've got downsizers, again, you're going to skew a little bit older. Um, if it's a let's say a, a starter condo, you might want to skew a little bit younger. Uh, and uh, and again, so but you can have you can have multiple audiences and multiple ads running. And then of course you want to set your budget. So again, like I mentioned, it's going to cost you about 10 cents per person that sees it. The great thing about Facebook ads is that you can commit, let's say, $100 to an ad. Um, if whatever reason the property sells, it's not be, it's not doing what you want it to do. You can pause that. You can pause that ad, and you, you're not committed to the full spend. So again, it allows you to tweak the ad or cancel it completely. Um, and I really don't know of any other advertising. And again, no professional affiliation. Um, but I, I don't know of any other advertising option that would do that for you. Um, you know, like you can't place an ad in the paper, and they're not going to give you a refund if it didn't what you wanted it to do. Ah, so I talked about the boosted post. The other kind is like, is really what I call Facebook ad campaign. Uh, it's a little bit more involved and time consuming because uh, there are a lot more options to go through, uh, 
And the other thing is, uh, I don't know if you found this, but Facebook will not let you post photos with any text on it in the ad campaigns. I don't know why they let you do it in a boost, but if you have any text, they may actually reject your ad. Um, and that even includes like, like uh, uh, numbers for uh, homeless for sale. I actually have to blur them out. Um, so it's, uh, it, and, and they also are particular about the photo size. So I find, I get really good results with the boosted post. Uh, again, it's really quick to set up. You can reuse your audiences. Um, and the results in terms of interaction are really strong. So does anybody have questions about Facebook ads? So again, so that is the reason that you want to be advertising because again, the average reach is going to be 1%. Yeah. So really, I'm, I'm, you can post all you want on your own Facebook business page, but the odds are extremely poor that anyone's actually going to see it. And so if you really want yes. to make use, you've got to spend some money. Yes. Yeah, you've got to spend some money. Even if it's 50 to to $100 a month, uh, you're still going to be reaching, I can say, about 10,000 people for that. Uh, and I think it's, it's, a, it's a good investment. Yeah, we're kind of on what, like, let, let's, I mean, we're on the business of wanting to generate leads. Yes. I mean, I, I think that, you know, I'm not so concerned about advertising my, my listing or whatever. I mean, I can do that easily enough, right? That's not right. right. The question is, well, what's the key to actually, um, you know, finding clients through Facebook or, and LinkedIn? I mean, this is what I'm most interested in. Right. right. Uh, there is a Facebook ad tool called the Facebook Lead Ad. Um, I don't know if anybody has experienced them. So they've been, they've, it's been up for a couple of years. Uh, and what it is, it's a similar to an ad campaign with the goal, of course, of generating leads. Uh, the challenge is that it tends to be more expensive to get people's information. Because uh, when they click learn more for a lead ad, it actually comes up with a box pre-populated with their contact information. Uh, so I've done it for several clients. It runs about you're looking at about $25 for every person that actually clicks to send them information. Um, again, one client in Yorkville, she was able to line up a couple of coffee meetings with potential people with those lead ads. Uh, but again, she invested in a professionally shot video for that. The campaign was actually about $500. And so, uh, unfortunately, I don't have an answer as to whether it turned into business, but it, that, is, that is how she started to, to turn it into real life. Um, so really, the value for me, I think, is in that awareness and people continue to see you and anybody that knows who you are and has done business, they're going to refer you because they remember you. Um, is anybody familiar with the Brian Buffini method? Okay. So um, I don't love statistics, except I love this one. So they did a survey of some home buyers and sellers um, as to how happy they were with the realtors. So they asked, so in terms of the uh, buyers, they said, how many of you would use your agent again to buy a place? Does anybody want to guess? How many people said they were happy with the like service? 20%. I'd say 10, 50. <laughs> Higher. Higher. About 30. Higher. 40. Higher. 80. Higher. 99. Lower. Okay, 88. 88% 88 of people said they were happy uh, with the service. Uh, and then they asked sellers the same thing. How many people would, would, you, would use your seller? Um, slightly lower than the buyers, but anyone want to guess? 70. Higher? Oh, uh, yeah, very close. 84. Uh, and then the next question they asked, though, was, how, uh, how many, uh, what was the name of your real estate agent? You want to guess how many people could actually name their agent? <laughs> 24. Wow. 24% could, could remember the name of their real estate agent. How old were um, these people? Well, I'm not just joking. I don't, I don't know how those numbers. I can't remember uh, anything. But again, it sort of speaks to awareness that, you know, you, uh, just because you've done a deal with somebody and it's involved a large sum of money, doesn't mean you're going to stay top of mind. Mm -hmm. um, so again, um, I have a client who said he went to, uh, he got a, a listing deal and saw a, com a competitor's magnet on the fridge. So again, it's even though you see that every day, I think something like Facebook, email, social media is a lot more immediate. And again, you're providing something, something of value there. And I think that really does make the difference. Because um, again, not a lot of agents are really using social media uh, on a regular basis. A lot of people have pages or profiles, but when you go to them, you're going to see last post was uh, like 2016. Um, they may not have any followers. So, you know, it, doing it well can, re I think, really can have an impact in terms of awareness. Yes? I had a question about the text. So, you can I use any text? Uh, not on the picture. You can use a headline and a description, uh, of course, for the uh, for the ad, but in the photo itself, they don't, they don't like text. Yeah. 
So just to give a couple of examples about how it's worked. Um, so this is a client of mine. So he posted a video last fall. Um, so we spent actually $25 and it reached 3,900 people. Uh, I've got, I think, 74 shares. So I can't read. I think I know it was like 12 or 13 comments. But again, it was very specific. We targeted it to people that liked his page and their friends. Uh, and it got, it got really a high level of interaction. Um, and again, that's the benefit of Facebook because, you know, and, and combining it with video. Because again, it reached the right kind of people and it generated a lot of engagement. So it helps keep them remembered. Um, and the other thing you can do with a boosted post, again, when you advertise to people who like your page and their friends, uh, this is what Amazon has done. So I have three friends whose names here begin with A. They like Amazon.ca, and that's how I know, that's how Amazon found me. Uh, because their post was uh, people who like their page and their friends. Uh, and finally, one of, the, one of the good things about Facebook ads is that you can actually use them to help boost the number of people who like your page. So again, this was a boost. We boosted, uh, I think, uh, over 3,000 people saw it. Uh, and then when you actually click on the number of people that like the page, so it brings up a list. And beside people's names, it'll actually say um, liked or invite. Uh, so here you can see the top one. It says invite. You can click that person to like your page. Because what has happened here is they have liked the post because they saw it on their feed. Uh, so you know they're interested in what you're posting about, but now you want to get them to like your page so that they can see more of what you're posting. And again, it's just a quick button. You go through the list, invite. Um, there are some great out because they've already been invited. Um, and again, it's uh, once you pay for the app, this tool is free. Uh, and it's a good way to, to increase the number of followers. So I know I've spoken really exclusively about Facebook. Um, when you are advertising on Facebook, though, you can actually uh, click a box that will advertise on Instagram as well. Um, and again, it's the same cost. Uh, and it'll show people in your geographic area. Um, all the social platforms have some sort of advertising option. Uh, again, I prepared this on Monday, I think, before Google announced that they were killing off Google+. Um, so I would say it depends on your demographic. I do think Snapchat's going to become a much bigger thing in the next few years. Uh, you can advertise there. But I would say your money at this point is best spent on uh, Facebook and Instagram. Last thing I want to say about social media ads, one of my brokers actually refers to uh, social media. She says it's a really great for vendor pacification. Uh, again, because when you're in a listing presentation, uh, a lot of people are going to want to know what your marketing strategy is. Uh, and a lot of them are going to be kind of insistent that you've got a social media presence. So the fact that you can show people, again, you put the last listing that you had was advertised to 10,000 people, you got this many clicks. I think that's actually worth its weight already. So even if you paid $100 for an ad, um, really, I mean, you're promoting yourself. But it's a, again, it's a really great tool. Uh, and that's it's something that people like to see, that you're actually um, using the newest tools available. Now, of course, we all know that the people that are serious about buying are going to go through the MLS. But again, uh, that's why she calls it vendor pacification. So do you have any questions about the advertising? I mean, I could actually do like a whole hour and a half on advertising, but I'm not going to bore you today. Yeah. I also want to speak for a moment about why you want to use social media to grow your email list. Um, so again, in my opinion, email, um, email and social media do separate things. Uh, and what email is great for, social media lacks. And what social media is great for, email lacks. Um, and again, because email is a really great way of getting a message out to everybody on your database. Um, in terms of deliverability, you're going to find it hits the inbox of about 97% uh, of people. Um, again, you're going to find that 20, 22% actually open it, but they're still going to see your name, your subject line. Uh, so in terms of, of getting it shared, um, that's where social media comes in. Uh, and one of the big differences, so here's again some statistics, uh, but you're going to find across the board, uh, email and social media, you get more customer engagement. Again, because it's just one more additional touch. Again, they're finding 57% more customers, uh, and more importantly, 39% uh, more referrals. Because uh, I think as easy as it is to share a post on uh, social media, again, with email, it, it's a, a more professional branded product. Um, and the big difference is that you actually own that, that email address. So if somebody's giving you permission to email them, yeah, yeah you own that. And until they unsubscribe, uh, you can keep them on your list. 
Whereas with social media, again, the organic reach is low. Um, and so emails are a really great way to get them. And the way you can use social media is just uh, to build your email list, just include sign up links. Uh, so if you're using, yeah, so if you're using like a professional product like a MailChimp, Exact, Constant Contact, they're actually going to give you these links. And you can put them in, for instance, in your Instagram profile. Because um, again, there's nowhere else on Instagram that you can use a link uh, except in your profile. Uh, also, uh, on your Facebook page, a couple of places. Um, one is you can add a tab that says sign up for my email newsletter. Uh, the other is the call to action button at the bottom of the, of the banner. So you can actually just include a link. Um, great thing is that it really is a one-time thing, right? You set it up once uh, and then people when people visit your page, you have an opportunity to get them. Uh, because people really still do enjoy getting marketing, marketing messages by email. And of course on LinkedIn. So again, on LinkedIn, you've got that opportunity to have uh, three different sites. Uh, one can be your website, one can be Facebook, one can be a sign up, a sign up for email marketing. How can I do that? Oh, it's just, uh, so can it's, I add my email to the sign up tab on my Facebook? Uh, it's just an app within Facebook that you can add. So if you search for um, join my list or email newsletter, they'll give you a couple of different options. And you can plug, and you can plug in a link. Yeah. So I know we've covered a lot, um, and I'm happy to take some additional questions. Um, but I would suggest for anybody who's active, um, or really anyone who's starting out, focus on one network. Again, focus on one network, learn how to use it properly. Um, one of the best things you can do before you get started is actually uh, look out at your competition, uh, especially on Facebook, on Instagram. Um, those pages and feeds are all public. So you can actually have a look and see what kind of interaction people are getting. Um, it doesn't give you the analytics, but it'll tell you how many people commented, how many have liked it, how many have shared it. And it can give you a really good idea of what sort of content people are interested in. Um, and nobody will know that you're actually doing it. They creep a lot of people. Okay, so there you go. So it can be a really great tool. I have like a whole page of like likes, but I don't want to like because right. I want to watch what they're doing. Fair enough. Uh, you can actually follow them. But I don't want them to know that I'm following them in case I copy something that they've okay. done. So. Okay, okay. All right. But I don't you. remember them, so I have to write right. them down. Okay. Fair enough. But right. I creep them every day. Yeah. Um, yeah, so again, uh, in terms of getting started or uh, with a new a new channel, pick your platform. If you're on Facebook, maybe you want to try Instagram. Um, you know, if you're if you're on Instagram only, maybe you want to try Facebook. Make sure LinkedIn is up to date. Um, and again, really, you need to make sure that the, uh, the accounts that you have are business accounts. Because uh, again, they'll give you the advertising tools and the analytics, which really help you sort of refine what you're posting and make sure that what you're posting is interesting. Um, and again, just start posting. So, brings me to the formal end of the presentation. Um, I would like to, I'm, I'll, I'll have to take questions. I would like to speak briefly about what it is that I do. Um, so again, I've been in business for almost 11 years, working with real estate agents, uh, helping them build their business with email marketing and social media. So in terms of social media, I think one of the most valuable things we do is we provide a strategy. So we take a look at what social channels you're on, we figure out how you're doing, set goals, and figure out how we can get you to the next level. Um, as well, uh, we can do regular posting for you, uh, so you're completely hands off, uh, as, and as well as assistance with Facebook, with Facebook advertising. Because uh, I know a lot of realtors like to deal with people and not computers. Uh, so um, that's one option. Uh, in, and in terms of email marketing, the core product is a unique email newsletter. So there are companies out there that will do sort of a cookie cutter one that everyone sends out. Uh, what we do is we design a branded template for our clients and we choose content specifically for them. So the content does not get duplicated across other clients. Uh, each email is unique uh, in terms of the introduction, the content, the listings. Uh, the only thing that is the same is the market news. Um, and that's really the most popular product. And from there, we go to holiday cards, autoresponders, um, and surveys. Um, but really, the core product is the newsletter. So before I take questions, I would like to say anybody uh, who came in after, um, I have to send out a copy of the slides if you want to drop off your business card. 
Um, and now I'd like to open it to questions. Yes. No, no, I was going to say, so uh, do you have a, I guess, a, play, a pricing structure? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we've got, we have different, different packages and we can customize them as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you have a printout of your website? Uh, it is on the website, and I'm also happy to email it out. Oh. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The prices aren't on the website, just in case. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, but, the, but in terms of the newsletter, it starts at uh, the packages start at two twenty a month, uh, but to I think four ninety nine. Social media starts at three fifty a month and goes up to eight ninety nine. And of course, if you want to invest more in Facebook advertising, you can. Um, do you also offer like in like just helping set up everything? Yeah, absolutely. We could absolutely do a setup and a strategy. Uh, some people like to do it on their own. Uh, we're not yet posting on Instagram for people because I find to be effective on Instagram, it really has to be coming from you. Yeah. So the thing is, if you're already taking the pictures, you might as well go that next step and just post it on Instagram. Um, yeah, I was working with a, um, a milliner, a hat maker in Toronto, and his first instruction to me was, I do not want to be on my phone, I do not want to be in front of a computer. And I just told him, I'm like, David, you have no choice. Like I can't, I cannot do social media unless you want to hire me to be here eight hours a day, um, which you don't want and I don't want. Uh, and so he sort of fought it, but really after a few weeks, he was getting a lot of interaction because uh, again, people people loved his stuff, and he's totally happy to be. He's doing his own Instagram now, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, so it is it is entirely possible. Uh, it just takes getting to the habit. It really helps with Hootsuite. Like if you could just mm. do them all at once, right? Yeah, and yeah, you can also, of course, schedule it for the week. So even if, yeah, you can, so it, 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 that is a, a real time saver. Yes. You said that uh, it's a good idea to make one post every day. Um, yes. Something like that. Now, you're, you're not going to boost every single post you make. No, absolutely. So, so how do you go about choosing um, what posts to boost? Because I noticed that. Uh, the ones that you showed, anyways, it's not the listing, it's not the open houses, it's right. not anything sales related. Right. So, so what do you do? How do you, um, know? you know, that's a good point. I should actually add the sales related things that are boosted, but I would say any original content you're coming up with. So if you've got a video about something, if you've written a blog, um, if you're featured in a news article, um, thank you. I would ask, that is, that is the thing that I would boost first. Um, that will build awareness. Uh, if you if you're trying to get if you're trying to build the number of likes on a page, you might want to boost something softer. So again, like it's a local event, um, whether the growing page is sponsored it, that's a great thing. Like the garage sale for shelter, um, if you're taking part in that, um, if you're out there and taking photos, that is what I would do first. Uh, is original content, uh, and then go to the things. And they tell you, like, if you boost this, it's going to reach X amount of people. Yes. So you can kind of see, like. Yeah, so you can adjust your budget that way. Right. Um, yeah, I would say open houses are a really good thing to boost earlier in the week. Because, um, again, you're going to get such a targeted area. Uh, I think it's a really great way to move it into real life, because chances are you're going to get some nosy neighbors who may be in the market. And, and then you can really... put their, co their um, can't you put their, Postal code? Yeah, you put yeah, you put a postal code in. Again, it's a way to meet them in real life, shake their hand, and then and then they tell you. If you so, want to go yeah. broad, like if you wanted to like I did a post I have a house for sale in Mount Albert, but I want to reach Mark from Richmond Hill people. Right. So I just click Mark on that click Richmond Hill and the thing went like thirty kilometers I think it was yeah. around. So then it told me how many people I could reach in, in the demographic that I was looking for. Tells you how much it's going to cost you per day to do it. Right, you can break down. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Well, if there are no more questions, I'm happy to take questions one on one, um, but you're free to go. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you.
But people are on Facebook. I think I put their names in it. Yeah, so I don't use it. My mom is on Facebook. Yeah, so. I should stop to be up when you said 20 is a contact. Yes, 20 should be sales. At what point is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope that makes sense. That I want to post yeah. for people. Yes. 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 It's, it's, it's going to be on my business page. Yes. Right. But it's something that I'm used to because I don't think you can do it. And we go there. So, you know, so, so what should I have there? Just add them yourself. I want to do it perhaps, or it's not related. It's obviously not related. So, I think personal personals, but something lighter. Again, like, so I said, I'm going to do that. 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 Oh, uh, yeah. Some people can like yeah. 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 Yeah.
I need help. Yeah, yeah, give me a call or email. Yeah, 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 yeah. Together. Okay, very nice. Because we'll get a few, because over there. I joined the team and they do their own sessions. I want to still continue because, you know, I still need to, like, and I just started. I don't know what to do. Okay. So I want to start it off the right. I don't, I want to make a web page. I want to. No, but the benefit is that they're connected with the, uh, what's that tool called? It's Casey, but it's connected to the MLS, it pulls in the listing, it's automated, it looks good, it has like search engine optimization. Um, oh, we're down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, that's email marketing. Yeah. So they, okay. that's the extra email marketing. Um, and so, sorry, yeah. what was the so other one that you said? Agent locator. Agent locator. Well, yeah. Well, it's just to sign up for it all. Well, 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 so, um, how much would you charge, like, to help you do this? Uh, yeah. So, my point is that, like, you're just making sure that, like, when, you know, someone's on my page yeah. and all that kind of stuff, like, it shouldn't be more than, like, two, three hours. Right. Um, what I would also want to do is a bit of extra. Okay. Right, because, of course, because uh, it's been my experience, yeah, you do, you have to do a setup, but then if you don't know what to do, right? I do know what to do. Okay. I used to run some of these social media. Oh, okay. Right. But everything was set up. Right. So I knew I had in my head and I wanted to do this thing, like motivational Mondays, right. okay. Tip Tuesday, and then you get Wednesday, to Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, yeah. so Thursday, Fridays are like Freedom Friday or, you know, four week Friday, right. like all these things. Like I have all these ideas okay. and all I like creep enough people like that I write down. Like all the hashtags and right. stuff okay. that I oh, want, like all the blogs and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like I have pages and pages. Okay. Right. I've been off for a month. I just got my license and I had surgery, so I've okay. been lying in bed, right, right. creeping well, everybody, actually, you know? Right. So I just need someone to help me set everything up. Okay. Um, yeah, we can put one on. Perfect. That was in the setup that I can also give, say, of the yeah. free YouTube account. Perfect. Um, yeah, that's what I like. And then help me figure out Canva. Like, just, like, in case, you know, when can we meet? I don't have my calendar in front of me, but mm -hmm. um, generally the, like, the setup and stuff would be done on site. Okay. Um, and then yeah. I don't know if there would be any person meeting because it would be a little bit of explanation. I mean, it's, it's you're, what you're already doing, you'd be able to master it once. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Canvas is really straightforward. Okay. For a more okay. And what I mean, by all means, I'm downtown. Okay. But, um, in the rest of one degree. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's good. Okay. So um, you'll send the slides, right? Slides. And it doesn't have my picture on it. I just okay. got them yesterday. Okay. Yeah. And that preview thing I sent you, I texted you. Okay. Thank you. So um, and I asked to be friends on Facebook already. So. Okay. So I'm pretty good with that, but like, yeah, I want to, like, I don't know how to link my emails, I don't know how to ask, get, like, more people, like, send me their emails, all that kind of stuff. So I just want that. Okay, yeah, so um, I'll reach out, we'll, we'll figure out what, uh, what the steps are. Mm -hmm. and we yeah, no, it's have a conversation. Do you know, I'm getting Perfect. Do Great. Do you know Mark Saltzman? I know of him. Isn't he like, yeah, 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 yeah,
Not the flooring. So you're going to buy that for him for Christmas? <laughs> you are a cheap father. <laughs> So what do you want to do, dude? Yeah. Yeah. You know where you're, you know where you're going. You want to put it in your thing? No. Mm -hmm. Well, he can always. I can always change it after. Right? What? My website. Thank you. Well, they, but they use the template. So you gotta tell them how much you're gonna charge me to change the template. You didn't like the box, I just gave you one. You know how Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. And you can do That's a, that's a, that's yeah, not. Okay. That's actually a good idea. That plastic. Sorry, they got my buddy. Well, yeah, your cards are all. Then again, listen. I mean, I got a Toys R Us here. No, no. Random Joe. Yeah. Do some fixing up. He's, yeah, he's done the back. He's stained the back of that cabinet of railing. Uh, stained the back and all the back of wood, right? And it would be red. Uh, so he charged me 1200 bucks, right? Um, now we're going to go for the current. So you're paying for it? No. Oh, they are. Yeah. So then he had a friend of mine to the stage. So she's part of this.
actually like self so I'm more than 